Good morning, Heaven Bound family, and uh, all that might be watching this morning. This is Pastor Larry with a moment in the Word, and um, I was reading this morning on this Christmas Eve, and by the way, uh, Merry Christmas to anyone who might be listening this morning, and uh, hope that you have a wonderful day, and uh, that um, uh, you'll bless someone, and, and God in turn will bless you throughout the day. I pray if, if uh, you're sick or afflicted this morning, that God is just going to touch and heal and lift you up and give you a, a wonderful day in serving the Lord. And um, um, you know, I, I was uh, reading the Christmas story again, and allow me to read just uh, the account in, in Luke chapter one, beginning at verse twenty-six. It said, "In the sixth month, that would be when Elizabeth, the mother of John the Baptist, was six months in her pregnancy." The angel Gabriel was sent from God unto a city of Galilee named Nazareth to a virgin espoused to a man whose name was Joseph of the house of David, and the virgin's name was Mary. And the angel came in unto her and said, Hail thou that are highly favored, the Lord is with thee. Blessed art thou among women. And when she saw him, she was troubled at his saying, and she cast in her mind what manner of salutation this should be. And the angel said unto her, Fear not, Mary, for thou hast found favor with God. And behold, thou shalt conceive in thy womb, and bring forth a son, and shall call his name Jesus. He shall be great, and shall be called the Son of the Highest. And the Lord God shall give unto him the throne of his father David. And he shall reign over the house of Jacob, uh, which would be Israel, forever. And of his kingdom there shall be no end. Speaking about the millennial kingdom. Uh, verse 34 said, Then said Mary unto the angel, How shall this be, seeing I know not a man? And the angel answered and said unto her, The Holy Ghost shall come upon thee, and the power of the highest shall overshadow thee. Therefore also that holy thing which shall be born of thee shall be called the Son of God. And behold, thy cousin Elizabeth, she has also conceived a son in her old age, and this is the sixth month of her pregnancy. Verse 37 says uh, uh, that Elizabeth is uh, in her sixth month, who was called barren, that she couldn't have children, and now she's old and too old to bear children. But in verse 37, it says, for God, for with God, nothing shall be impossible. And Mary said, behold, the handmaid of the Lord, be it unto me according to thy word. And the angel departed from her. As I was thinking about that, I, I was just kind of contemplating. On, I wonder what Mary was doing that morning when she got up and it was another day, just like every other day. She's a young teenage girl, no doubt full of life. Uh, perhaps thinking about uh, Joseph, her fiance, and, and the love that she had for him and he for her, and the fact that uh, one day they would be married and would raise a family. And all of a sudden, all of her plans, her dreams, and so forth were interrupted. An angel stood before and said that... Uh, she, as a virgin, is going to become pregnant, and she's going to have a child. Mary says, how can it be? Uh, you know, a virgin can't become pregnant. Uh, uh, she, now she's no longer a virgin. Uh, you know, surely uh, explain what's going to happen, and the angel explains to Mary how God is going to bring forth the Savior of the world through her. And I love uh, Mary's response. Even so, be it under thy handmaid according to thy word. In other words, Mary is saying, okay, I don't understand all of this. I don't understand how it can be, but you say it's going to be. Uh, I believe what you're saying, and uh, I'm surrendered to whatever God wants to do with my life. I thought today, you know, it's Christmas Eve, and some of you will probably be out shopping today. If you haven't already bought up your gifts and uh, uh, that you're going to give, and um, as um, 
you're looking for this or that, maybe a toy uh, or maybe something for a daughter. Let me ask you, have you thought about what gift you're going to give to Jesus? You know what gift Jesus wants from you? First of all, he wants a surrendered life. Mary could be chosen by God to bear his son because Mary was surrendered to the Lord. When she found out that she was going to be pregnant, which might have cost her her marriage or her fiancé, could have said, hey, you know, matter of fact, he thought about putting her away, the Bible says privately, only after God sent an angel uh, to um, give him understanding did he go ahead and marry her. But um, uh, all the shame that she possibly would approach, trying to explain how it was that um, she hadn't been permissive, that that this child that she's bearing is of the Holy Ghost and uh, get people to believe that. What gift do you plan to give to the Lord this week? I thought of the various biblical characters. There in Matthew, it said, and there were wise men from the East. They came seeking the Lord. Let me ask you, uh, are you seeking the Lord today? Are you seeking God's will for your life? Hey, that's a gift that you can give to the Lord. Get along somewhere, just you and God. Maybe open up the Bible, read the uh, text that I just read to you, and ask yourself, Lord, can I say whatever you want to do with me is okay with me? Have you surrendered to, what if God said, I want you to go to a, a, a mission field, perhaps in Iraq or even in Iran or uh, any Muslim country? Or how about the Chinese? Are you, could you say, even so be it unto me? My friend, listen, the gift that you can give to Jesus today, you can't buy with money, but um, you can uh, surrender your life to him as Mary did. You can seek him as the wise men did. In Luke, we have the story there of the shepherds who were just, you know, just humble shepherds watching their sheep. Just a, another possibly dull night. Sitting out there perhaps in the cold watching over sheep, making sure some wolf or lion or bear doesn't get one of them. And all of a sudden, the sky burst is open and an angelic host is singing and, and saying, uh, there is born to you this day in the city of David a child that shall be Christ the Lord. A, uh, would you... Are you willing to drop everything? I mean, the Bible says, and, and the shepherds, they left their flock and they went. They said, come, let us go. Let us see. And when they went and saw the Christ child, they made haste to go forth and tell. Hey, you want to give Jesus a gift today? How about going forth and telling somebody about your experience with God? Hey, if you haven't had an experience with God, the greatest gift that you can give to Jesus is your heart. And you do that by simply recognizing that he is God Almighty. He is the creator of the universe. He is the one who created you. And uh, you belong to him. And uh, whether or not you're a Christian, you belong to him. For he created you. But uh, uh, what were you... What will you give Jesus today? Hey, will you go forth as the shepherds did, telling everybody that you've experienced a new birth? Not the birth of a baby born in a manger, but a birth in your own life. Jesus said to a very religious man in John 3, 3, Verily, verily, I say to you, except you be born again, 
you can't see the kingdom of heaven. Nicodemus said, how can one that is old enter a second time into his mother's womb and be born? Jesus said, verily, verily, I send you, except you be born of water, that's a natural birth, and of the spirit, you cannot enter into the kingdom of God. My friend, have you been born again? The greatest gift you can give Jesus this morning is your heart by surrendering your life to him. And Mary said, whatever Lord you want to do with me, do. What a gift Mary gave to Jesus that night there or that day there in Nazareth. Um, what a gift the wise men, as they came and they bestowed upon him uh, uh, the three gifts there of gold and mirth and frankincense. But, uh, my friend, more important than those three gifts, though they have significance, can you imagine the arduous task of those wise men traveling over 500 miles on Campbell, following a star that they might come and find the one who is to be born, King of the Jews? Are you, are you seeking him? Is your heart so surrendered to God that you're ready to go home to be with him? You're totally convinced that to die is to be with Jesus. And so like Simeon, he said, Lord, now I've seen the Christ child. I'm ready to go home. Hey, are you ready? Are you ready? If God was to choose today to take you, are you ready? Let me share a verse of scripture with you, and then I'm going to close. In Ephesians chapter 2, everybody is familiar with verses 8 and 9. For by grace are we saved through faith, and not of ourselves. It's a gift of God, not of works, lest any man should boast. Teaching us, therefore, that, uh, that hey, it's nothing that we can do to earn our salvation. We're saved by grace. Uh, that is, God graciously provided a way through the death of his son Jesus for us to be saved. We put faith in that. We accept the fact that he died for us. And accepting him as our Savior, we accept him as our Lord to walk in obedience, to be as Mary, uh, to just surrender to him, to be as a wise man, daily seeking his will for your life. Be as the shepherds proclaiming. Be as Simeon, uh, living so as to be ready at any moment to, and, and not just ready, but anxious. I think of Anna, who wanted more, nothing more than just to bless uh, Mary and Joseph there. Hey, don't give God a gift today. Go forth and bless someone. It will bless you. It will bless God. And uh, God, in turn, will bless you. The verse I was going to share with you is Ephesians 2.10. After pointing out that we're saved by grace through faith, not of ourselves, it's a gift of God, not of works, lest any man should boast. In Ephesians 2, 8, 9, verse 10 says, For we are his workmanship. We're created in Christ Jesus unto good works, which God has foreordained that we should walk therein. My friend, do you see yourself today as God's workmanship? You've been ordained by God to go forth and do the good work that God has done.